There's another aphorism that he doesn't quote here, that uh, the one said, let me become many. And then there's another Upanishadic Narayan, uh, Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam, uh, famous Upanishadic verse. There is one eternal, one supremely conscious living entity. And then he expanded himself into many eternals and many conscious living entities. So even though our language is kind of crippled when it comes to talking about these things, we say he expanded himself or he created so many living entities. But actually, those living entities exist eternally along with the Lord. They are of the same constitutional quality as the Lord. Therefore, like the Lord, they have no beginning and no end. The living entities are eternal. We have eternal life. Uh, we don't have to go through something to get eternal life. We already have it. The question is, what are we going to do with it? The problem is most people in the material world are misusing their eternal existence for some temporary activities, some temporary goals. Therefore, they're suffering because this is uh, in conflict with the original constitutional nature of the soul. So we're going to use Jyotish to try to help these people. Now, Narayan has three categories of potencies or energies. And we have to be really clear on this so we can tell the difference between them. It's like sometimes it doesn't work and then all of a sudden it starts to work again. I don't know. No. The battery's new? Anyway, the spiritual world consists of three-fourths of the living entities. Sometimes we, we hear it described as three-fourths of God's power. Well, power, God's power is actually unlimited. <laughs> but of the power that is manifest, three-fourths or three-fourths of the living entities live in the spiritual world and one-fourth in the material world, approximately. So the material world is created through the potencies of Narayan, and these potencies are defined in three broad categories as internal, marginal, and external. The internal potencies are completely spiritual. They are never in touch with matter. Uh, and the external potency is maya, or the material potency, and that creates these material universes. Then there's the marginal potency, and that's us, the living entities. And we have the choice, being marginal. Marginal means on the border, tatashta. Tatashta means actually on the border line. Like when you have a river, on the bank of the river, there's a place where it's neither the shore nor the water. That's called tatashta. Just like there's a time when the sun is rising or setting, when it's neither day nor night. That's the tatashta, or the border. It's neither one nor the other. So we're neither internal nor external. We're in between. And the tatashta shakti is emanated by Lord Narayan also, because he is also on the borderline, in between the material and spiritual creations. So we have the ability to turn either way. We can turn inside and see the spiritual potency, or we can look outside through the material senses and see the material potency. Now, all those potencies are God's energy. The difference is our energy is primarily spiritual. So when we look outside through the material senses, we see so many things that are inharmonious with our real nature. But when we look inside in the spiritual world, everything is wonderful, everything is beautiful, everything is connected with our original nature and our original identity. So, he further, where'd it go? Classifies the internal potency. Ah! 
telling you, this thing is not very good. It's not as good as the other one. It tends to get stuck. Yes, please. The internal potency is further divided into Hladdini, Sandhini, and Samvit. We hear about Sat Chit Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda, the qualities of the Supreme Lord as eternal existence, complete knowledge, and perfect bliss, are derived from these three potencies. The Samvit potency gives the Sat quality of eternal existence. Huh? The Sandhini gives the uh, Chit quality of perfect spiritual knowledge. And the Hladini potency gives the quality of Ananda or spiritual bliss. And all these potencies are persons. Uh, especially Srimati Radharani is the Ananda or Hladini Shakti. Sometimes she's called Hladini. Uh, that's uh, her functional name. So we should understand that these potencies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are personal, they're real, they're eternal, and he has a relationship with them. Maybe you could put it over here on the projector like we had it before. Then we have more. I don't know, for some reason it's freezing up. See that? No, it's not. Is it going to reconnect? Are you moving it or am I moving it? I'm moving it? Yes. See, it's, I'm moving it smoothly, but it's moving in jerks, you see? What a mess that would be. Well... Okay, move, uh, point the pointer on the next paragraph. See, now I have to tell you everything. It's very awkward. Can everybody hear? Is it clear? Or are we having some problems that we don't know about? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, we're having a problem with the mouse, that's all. Now it's moving, you see? Now it's okay. But you see it stop like that? Actually, I'm moving it smoothly, but it's stopping. It's a fault of so many processes. Uh, <laughs> that poor laptop. He's got his computer so overloaded, the fan is just going. <laughs> okay. So. The external potency of the Lord creates this material world. And that's what we're engaged with on a day-to-day -day basis in the material world. So we have to understand how this is operating. Okay, basically, the material existence operates through the function of false ego. False ego means not our real identity, but a temporary identity which is reflected in the material energy. Uh, I am Mr. So-and-so. I am a member of this such-and-such -such family. I take birth in this country, and I'm a member of this political party and this religion, and so on and so forth. I work for a particular company, and this is my position, and uh, all these things. Material. So the material energy is uh, governed by means of three modes, or it manifests in these three modes. And we went over those three modes yesterday, oh, yesterday, in our last session. <laughs> so goodness, passion, and ignorance give us elevation, or stay the same, or we become degraded respectively. If we engage in passion and ignorance, then we become contaminated and degraded, then we have to take another birth in this material world. 
But if we can transfer our activities to the mode of goodness, then we become elevated and we actually become eligible for liberation. So the process of devotional service is beyond these three modes because it's eternal. Anything eternal is actually spiritual. People don't understand the distinction between material and spiritual is simply the distinction between temporary and eternal activities and existences. Ulysses has a question. I mean, Uddhava has a question. Krishna Prapti has a question. The modern astrologers believe that the universe is expanding. Is it? Krishna's potency is always expanding. <laughs> but actually, there is an alternate explanation for the redshift observations that the